Hello and welcome to this video in which we will demonstrate how to perform a two-sided hypothesis test on the mean with known variance. To motivate this, we'll use an example of a machine that does injection molding. And your job is to determine whether or not the machine is putting enough plastic into the injection molded parts. So we'll pose this as the following hypothesis test. Hypothesis zero is that the population mean, and in this case the population is the population of all things produced by this injection molding machine. So the population mean is 0 0.23 kilograms. And hypothesis one will be that the population mean is not 0 0.23 kilograms. 0 0.23 kilograms is the proper weight for the objects produced by the machine. And we'll suppose that we know that the standard deviation of the weights of the objects produced by the machine is the following, 0 0.01 kilograms. And we'll assume that we have 15 objects that we've weighed and we'll use the weight of these 15 objects to determine whether or not the machine is operating properly. This is a two-sided hypothesis test because we're checking whether or not the mean is equal to something or not equal to something. So on the screen now is the process to perform a hypothesis test on the mean. The first thing we need to do is define hypothesis 0, our null hypothesis and hypothesis 1. We've already done that. The next thing to do is to compute x bar, that is our sample mean, from the data that we've gathered. I've set the data up in a spreadsheet. You can see Along the left here we have the 15 different items that have been weighed and the weight that we got for each item in kilograms. We've got the mean under hypothesis 0 which is 0.23 kilograms. We've got the standard deviation which is 0.01 kilograms and again we have 15 observations. So to compute the sample mean we use the average function and average all of the weights to get 0.2239 etc etc. So now the next step is to compute Z0, which is our test statistic. Z0 is x bar minus the mean under hypothesis 0 divided by sigma over the square root of n. So we compute this with the spreadsheet. We get x bar minus mean 0 divided by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n which gives us a z0 of minus 2.344, etc. For a two-sided test, the p-value is given by the following formula, 2 times 1 minus the probability that my statistic z0 is less than some value, and in this case we want it to be less than the absolute value of z0. So let's implement this on the spreadsheet. My p-value is 2 times 1 minus norm estist of ABS, which is the absolute value of Z0. And you can see that this test gives us a p-value of 0 0.19. That p-value is small enough that we generally would reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, we would reject the hypothesis that the injection molding machine is using the right amount of plastic to create the parts. Now a second way to approach this problem is to find z alpha over 2. I apologize, that should have been z alpha over 2 all along. The idea is we're given alpha, which is the desired probability that we make a type 1 error. From this we find z alpha over 2, and then we compare the computed value of z0 with our value of z alpha over 2 to see if z0 falls in the critical region. If it does fall in the critical region, then we will reject h0. So we go to our spreadsheet to find z alpha over 2, and we do it using the norm s inverse. We do 1 minus alpha over 2, which gives us a z alpha over 2 of 2.5758. So let's use a graph of the sampling distribution of z0 to interpret what we've done. Firstly, we computed a value of z0, and it ended up looking something like this. Our p-value was the probability that we get something even more extreme than z0. Our p-value is the probability of this tail and this tail added together. The other approach we took was to find a value of z alpha over 2 and 
minus z alpha over 2. These values of z alpha over 2 are found so that the integral under the tails is equal to alpha. The sum of those two integrals is equal to alpha. And with our values of z alpha over 2 computed, we can now determine whether or not to reject the null hypothesis by determining if z0 falls in the critical region, which in this case it does not. So for this test, we would not reject the null hypothesis. Now you may ask, why did we reject the null hypothesis with the p-value and not here? If you look at the p-value, it's 0 0.019, which means that we would reject the null hypothesis for any alpha greater than 0 0.019 because the alpha that we've used for these computations is less than that, it does not allow us to reject the null hypothesis. That's the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.